Hello music fans and welcome back to my channel. My name is Dark Helmet and today we're continuing our journey through the Queen catalog. Uh, today we're up to a live version of Flick of the Wrist off the Sheer Heart Attack album. Uh, a little bit ago we had done the trilogy of um, Tenement Funster, Flick of the Wrist and Lily of the Valley. Uh, we did come across a nice version of Tenement Funster sung by Roger Taylor at one of his solo concerts. Queen never played Tenement Funster uh, live. Uh, but we are back to Queen today as a band, and we're back to the Rainbow concert. This particular concert we're visiting is in no, from November. They did play, well, they played technically three concerts in 1974 at the Rainbow. Um, the first one was uh, March 31st, I believe. Um, and then, of course, because that was, uh, you know, the release of Sheer Heart Attack was later in the year on November. So there's no flick of the wrist to be had in the March version. But they did play two concerts in November, I, 19th and the 20th, or 20th, 21st. I can't remember the exact dates of the of the November concerts. But I know Sheer Heart Attack was released on the 8th of November that year. So, um, you know, all, all those who were at the Rainbow concert here, they're going to be hearing this song, like, for the first time live, which would be such a trip because, it, you know, it was just released. I would imagine everybody at this concert had probably heard the song already. Um, but maybe not, right? Because, you, you know, you're looking at two weeks. Sometimes people don't get out and buy albums right away. It wasn't so easy to come across music back then um, as it was uh, today, you know, where you can just go online and, and download it instantly. Back then, you still had to go to the record store. Uh, so, yeah, there might have been some people in the audience that might have been hearing this song for the first time, which would just be, yeah, that would just be so special. Uh, but yeah, I'm guessing for the most part, most people had heard it. And then at the end of this one, because Brighton Rock hadn't quite made it into the rotation yet. So during these concerts, uh, the Brighton Rock solo was still being played during the song Son and Daughter from Queen One, which is where Brian May kind of focused and worked on so his, that solo live was during uh, Son and Daughter. And um, so yeah, they play a little bit of the Brighton Rock outro. Uh, at the end of Flick of the Wrist, which again would have been just such a nice treat. Uh, I would imagine for those who had already bought the album and had heard Brighton Rock, they were probably hoping to hear it. But like I say, Queen hadn't added it to their uh, playlist. Um, so we, we get a little hint of it at the end of this one. It's not a medley per se. It's just, it's very quick, very brief. But uh, I did come across this version here, which I was happy to find. It's a nice high resolution. It looks like there's a little bit of color correction that went on in there. Uh, so the visuals are really nice and clean, and the audio is really nice and clean. So very appreciative for whoever put this one together uh, for us to enjoy. So let's, um, yeah, let's sit back, relax, and, en and, and enjoy this one together. It's a, it's a great performance. The Rainbow Concert in general is a great performance. I think after I finish... Yeah, I think it would make sense that after the Sheer Heart Attack album that maybe we'll we'll do a reaction to the um, the Rainbow concert. Because the Rainbow, I think once we move on to the next album, we're probably going to be borrowing less from Rainbow and more from stuff like Hammersmith moving forward uh, with the timeline. So it would seem to make sense that, you know, once we've done the, the albums that we borrowed so heavily or the songs that we... Uh, concert that we borrowed so heavily from for our album reactions to to tie it into a nice little bow and, and just watch the whole concert together i mean i might not do it all in one sitting i don't know we'll see uh or maybe it'd be fun to do something like a live event you know we could do uh, a live show and just kind of all watch it together although it's very difficult with me being on the west coast in uh, north america I think I'm out of most people's um, time zone, so I don't know. We'll see. We've got we got a little bit of time to figure that one out. Uh, I want to get back into doing the the live shows. We still have a little bit of a Queen game we have to finish off. I also thought I might go back through that footage and maybe edit. Uh, I've never actually edited videos before. Um, I like to keep these videos as raw as possible. As you've probably noticed, I never edit my my videos. So yeah, sometimes I stumble through my words, and we all we all get to enjoy the bloopers as they happen, right? I don't get to edit them out later. But perhaps with the live stuff, because there is a couple of hours, you know, those live events we would have uh, when we were doing the Queen game. And I think it would be nice to be able to, if we could maybe chop that down to something a little more compact and maybe kind of re-release them um, 
as individual, you know, shorter, easier to watch. So those of us who weren't able to participate in the live events uh, can still enjoy it without having to, uh, you know, take two hours of their life just uh, just for that little bit of, of, of um, game we were playing. So uh, let's take a listen to this one, uh, Flick of the Wrist. I, I, Freddie's sounding especially good here. He's got, um, he's sounding very strong. Uh, but he's actually um, as much as strong as his voice was here uh, during the the um, Rainbow concerts. Um, he was still a little bit as I think I think it was Brian who once des described that Freddie tended to just yell or scream uh, when he was singing early on. He hadn't really mastered his voice the way he had say once he started in the later 70s. And like I say, I think Prime Queen was probably 81 to 83. Uh, for sound and vocals, and of course, you know, once you get the Live Aid and all the all the big stadium, I mean, he's sounding fabulous. He's really learned to play with his voice. He's really learned to, you know, engage with the audience using his vocalizations and his vibratos and his tones and, you know, the, the ranges and registers he'd play with a little more, a little earlier in, in uh, you know, the Queen timeline, like I say, during Rainbow here, he's, he was a little more raw, a little more aggressive, which I, personally I really like. I think this is why I kind of like the early concerts even more so than the later concerts. It's because there's a certain natural rawness to it. It's almost, um, I don't know, I just, I've always just uh, appreciated um, things in its most natural state as possible. And that's not to say his later voice wasn't in a natural state. I mean, of course, it certainly was. But like I say, there's just less control here. And it, yeah, it, it feels a little more, it feels a little more aggressive and it really fits this number really nicely. So yeah, let's take a listen to it, enjoy it together. And, and as I mentioned, uh, listen for that little bit of Brighton Rock outro at the end there, because I think those in the audience probably would have been pretty stoked to hear that. So as well, I'm 50 years later, I'm still stoked to hear it. So let's go.
Well done, gentlemen. Another amazing performance by Queen. Flick of the wrist, live at the rainbow. Uh, you know, what more can you say about that performance, right? It's just, it's truly stellar. Um, and, and let's, you know, the I love the chainmail glove. Uh, and we all know that's where MJ got it from, right? It's never, I don't think anybody's ever said it, but I think it's probably pretty fair to say, right? Uh, I know, as we all know, Michael Jackson was a big Freddie fan. And, you know, I know Fred, they had a lot of mutual respect. And, um, yeah, it's too bad they're, they're recording. It's, uh, had a llama involved. I think they would have done a lot more music, but unfortunately Michael Jackson brought a llama into the recording studio and, and Freddie just didn't want to have any of it. And, uh, yeah, I think that was about it. Uh, and they never actually got back together to finish all the recordings. Um, but anyways, uh, let's stick with this flick of the wrist. Um, yeah, I mean, what can you say? What a what a nice, clean recording, too. You know, we're, we're so lucky, we're so blessed to have such good recordings of, of Queen through different stages of the revolution, you know, because the Rainbow was uh, was a really nice, clean concert. You know, we've got, um, of course, Montreal in 81 is a nice, clean concert. And then, of course, as you get into the mid-80s, there's lots of, lots of great footage. Because uh, Queen, of course, always pushing the envelope, always... Uh, trying new techniques always putting their their uh, concerts on on like film stock which at the time was as good a resolution as you're going to find so and of course they bring it back down to sizes that we're watching on our screens it just looks like you're there it gives yeah that's it right it's just it's so clean that it feels like you're there in the audience participating in that concert and yeah i mean i i i I'll, i would never i i think i could probably go to a queen concert every night of my life and and never get bored of them they they really are um they really are on another level you know i've probably seen you know i, I don't even want to estimate but 100 200 concerts in my life and uh a lot of good concerts i mean there's been some for music for just music there's been a lot of great concerts uh but very few um artists really put on a a, a really top and live show and and i think that's really where queen separated themselves and, and and probably what drove their popularity uh as much as their music is is their live shows because uh you know they just they sold out wherever they went and um i don't think i ever heard a bad word from somebody leaving a queen concert i, ha I one of my very good friends uh wasn't a queen fan he did he didn't like queen at all in fact and um he came in the town and there was, if I remember, it was, they were, oh, the three concerts were separated by about a week, but the first night was Foreigner. And after that concert, he's telling me, oh my God, an amazing concert. I loved it. It was great. And for him, he came from a small town, so he hadn't seen a lot of big acts yet. Well, I mean, honestly, neither had I at that point, because we're, you know, we're talking about uh, 1983 for this. And anyways, yeah, he goes to Foreigner. I thought it was fabulous. And then up next, we went to Van Halen, which again, which, I mean, I love David Lee Roth. He was one of my favorite front men. That was a great concert. Um, and again, he's like, oh my God, I thought Foreigner is good. Van Halen, you know, Van Halen, oh, how can we beat that? And then, of course, uh, a couple of nights later, it was Queen. And uh, this non-Queen fan uh, went out the next day and bought all the Queen albums he could get his hands on the next day because like the concert literally made him a fan. He was just so absolutely blown away. Like I had already seen them once at that point, so this was my second time seeing them, so I I knew what to expect. But uh, yeah, for him it was um, it was really, and, and and that's I think that's the impact that Queen had on a lot of people at the time, and I think that's why Queen has such dedicated fans today is the you know the memories they left us with are just so deeply ingrained in our memories um that it's yeah it, it just it, it feels like it's a part of you it's it's it, it really kind of evolves your understanding of music and and what's possible on the live stage and tr what true talent and entertainment is and um yeah I, i've all you know i'll always be appreciative to be able to say that i've seen freddie um live twice including once where I was 
four rows back I could you know I could almost reach out and touch him and you know part of me makes me uh, wonder why didn't I you know why didn't I just charge the stage because during one of my concerts somebody did actually jump up on the stage during uh, we are the champions at the end and and the security guards were moving in and I, I'm going on best memory possible and I don't remember if it was which of I think it was the 83 concert but it might not have been it was one of the two concerts but anyways I'm going on my best memory possible but anyways he jumps up on the stage and I want to say the security was coming to get him and Freddie just kind of like told them to back off and the guy stood on the stage beside Freddie and, and finished We Are the Champions. And I was just like, whoa, you know, to have that to have that memory, like I don't know, they might have taken him off the stage afterwards and but all I know is that's one memory that that guy is you know, that he would I'm sure he would not trade that memory for, for anything. I mean, that would rival a birth of a child, I'm sure. <laughs> Anyways, I hope you all enjoyed this one. Uh, what a what a great concert. I think what we'll do uh, once I finish the Sheer Heart Attack album, I think we'll do a reaction to the Rainbow concert in general. We'll split it up into a couple of videos because I don't want to do it all at once. But I think it kind of makes sense to kind of tie up those first three albums because we borrowed so heavily from the Rainbow for those three concerts. It would be just nice to sit back and enjoy that uh, concert together. Or maybe we'll do a live event and see if we can't just all watch it at the same time together. That might be a lot of fun too, but I think it might be harder with my time zone. And I know a lot of you guys are, are like way out of my time zone. So it makes it a little bit difficult difficult for all of us to get together and enjoy that together. So we'll see. I want to get the, the live events going again on the weekend. We had that game going before... Um, before the hiatus and we you know we were 90 percent of the way through it and i really want to finish us finish that off i hate i hate untied uh ends uh, so yeah uh, hopefully in the next uh maybe not this weekend maybe the one after that um we'll we'll get back to finish that off i think we i think we have two more weeks we need to finish off the um individual songs and then we'll get the final 16 for like a third week and then narrow it down and we'll have the the winner of um the the, the queen fans favorite um queen song um and it'll be interesting because a couple of my favorites have already been kicked out thank you very much <laughs> but a lot of my favorites are still in so okay that's it thank you very much uh we'll see you in the next one coming up soon we don't have a live version of lily in the valley unfortunately queen didn't perform it live so we are sol uh, but that's okay because we'll move on to the next song on the album and and we're going to start getting into the real diversity of, of queen sounds uh at this point um and yeah there's some real treats uh to be had on on the sheer heart attack album still and then of course transitioning into probably uh, queen's masterpiece night at the opera which is another very diverse amazing album actually i guess I think the first seven album, I don't know, I can't say. They're all amazing albums. They're all good albums. Um, geez, it just makes me think of all the things I want to do now. I want to I want to do a video to rank my albums, for instance. That'll be fun to do. Uh, I want to do, um, I want to rank just not the music. But I'd like to rank like the album art. There's a lot of stuff I want to do with them. Uh, okay, anyways, let's go. Um, let's end this one. I got lots of ideas for later. Uh, but for now, we're just going to say have a great day. Take care.